I have to confess, one thing that I'm struggling with quite a bit with these prospects in the 2016 NFL Draft as I go through the evaluations is a lot of these guys that I look at with the bigger names, I watch them, and I sit there and say to myself, is that it? This can't be what everybody's buzzing about or talking about. And maybe part of it is on some of these guys I'm just not seeing and I'm just not paying close enough attention. That could be. On the flip side, it could be that some of these guys are just incredibly overrated by the NFL draft media. And some of those guys don't know what they're talking about and they don't know what they're seeing. And I think there's something to that too. But I think some of this just could be a realization starting to come to me that this is not a particularly great draft class. And maybe I'm comparing it to some previous year's draft classes and I'm just not that impressed. Now, I don't think it's 2013 week by any stretch of the imagination, but I definitely think it's weaker than 2014, weaker than 2012, and even weaker than uh, 2015, just in terms of recent drafts, maybe more along the lines of an 09 or 2010 draft, if you will. Uh, and I'm not that impressed so far, I have to be honest. But again, coming back to the players, a lot of these guys I watch, and I'm like, ugh. So I've had to do a lot more revisiting, a lot more second runs. It's kind of bogging me down in terms of evaluating some of these prospects. And maybe I'll figure it out as I go and be able to quicken my process. But a lot of these guys I look at, I'm like, that can't be it. That can't be all there is. So I have to go back and watch them again. And the guy that fits into that category perfectly to me is Andrew Billings. This maybe six foot one, 315 pound defensive tackle junior out of Baylor. You know, a lot of people have been high on him. I've seen some Aaron Donald comparisons and so on and so forth. Some people are really, really big on his NFL potential. And let me say this, is at first I just didn't see it. And I'm like, I don't know where this guy plays at the NFL level. I just don't see what's the big deal. Um, and I think the Aaron Donald comparisons are fucking ridiculous. So I decided to step back for a day or two and then come back and revisit Andrew Billings again and really dive into it and pay even closer attention, go through it more with a fine-tooth comb and see if I could pick up some of the things that I had previously missed. And to be fair, I did. The more I went and watched Andrew Billings on film and re-watched and watched again, the more I've started to like and the more impressed I've started to become. The Aaron Donald comparisons are fucking ridiculous, and I, and I would hope the NFL draft community does the following. Is that if I'm not comparing them to Aaron Donald, please stop comparing them to Aaron Donald. Because when it comes to Aaron Donald... I was probably bigger on him, earlier on him, than anybody was in that 2014 NFL draft process. And those of you that have been watching me for a while now, you know that's the truth. If I'm not comparing him to Aaron Donald, he's not Aaron Donald, so those comparisons need to stop. And frankly, in terms of the overall body of work and the skill set as a prospect, they're just not equivalent. They're not the same. They're just not the same type of player, so those comparisons need to stop. Well, like I said, as I went more and more, there's, I've grown to like Billings' game more and more, and I'm starting to feel more bullish on his prospects uh, at the NFL level. Uh, in terms of strength, you know, the first thing you go to is his strength. This is a big, bad dude that is fucking strong to all different levels. Some of you that are wrestling fans that happen to also watch my NFL videos know what I'm going to be referencing next. He broke the state powerlifting records in Texas for most combined rate that have been held by for over two decades, 22 years by, of all people, who? My motherfucking Henry, guess who? You damn right. And for those of you that know what I'm talking about, you have an appreciation and an understanding of it. And those of you that don't, that maybe aren't wrestling fans that happen to watch these, I'm, I'm sorry. You just don't understand what you missed out on. You don't know what you're missing when it comes to that reference I just made. So obviously, as you know, he would clearly have the smoky stamp of approval. So a lot of you will probably say, well, fuck it, go into the Pro Bowl every year. And to be fair, if he got a smoky stamp of approval, we know how that son of a bitch used to have a tendency to hitch his wagon to stars and make stars out of people. He's probably right. And I'll talk more about that in a little bit. Um, in terms of other strengths of this game, though, you know, on top of the strength, even though I'd like to see him demonstrate it more, Incredible recognition of the snap. I mean, this guy really gets off the snap, and he gets off of it with quickness. Really good initial burst and initial explosiveness. A guy at 315, almost 320 pounds, 
You just don't expect to have this much initial burst and quickness, but he does, and he has it in great abundance. I also like his pass rush motor, too. I think this is a guy that's relentless in his attempts to get to the quarterback. Also showed a nose to me to get penetration into the backfield. I know all these scouting videos I'm doing, so much talk about penetration on the defensive side of the ball. We'll start calling it the broke back series, but in all seriousness, a guy that really has a knack, a nose, a feel for getting into the backfield and disrupting plays. I also love his overall athleticism. You know, again, for a guy that big, you wouldn't think he could move as well as he does. But I've seen him move really, really well. Yeah, he's not a pure flyer, but man, for that size and the position that he plays, more than athletic enough. More than athletic enough. And I also like his attitude. He's got some fire in the belly. He's got some passion. And he plays with it and he lets it show. You know, he's got a little bit of an edge to him. You like that out of your trench players. They've got some edge, some meanness, some nastiness to him. You know, sometimes that could be a bit of a problem for Billings because he could play a little bit through the whistle and get some unnecessary penalties. But if you can harness that and corral that and funnel it and channel it properly, oh, man, that could be one of his biggest assets at the NFL level. Um, so, like I said, the more and more I watched him, the more of those traits started to stand out to me. And I really, really came away more impressed than I initially was. With that said, though, I still have some questions. You know, obviously... Maybe six foot one. I know he's listed at like six foot two, three ten. I think he's more maybe six foot half an inch or six foot one, three hundred fifteen pounds. You know, so teams are going to have concern about his height and length and his positional fit at the NFL level, and more on that in a little bit. Um, in terms of a guy that's that big, in terms of bulk and how strong he is, he's awfully reliant on his finesse game in order to get penetration into the backfield and in order to make plays. I'd like to see him better utilize his strength on a more consistent basis because my concern with guys that are heavily reliant on finesse is that those are the type of guys that could be whitewashed out of plays. They are guys that could be taken out of the equation, and at times Billings can be taken out of the equation because he's so reliant on his finesse. Um, another thing I think he needs to work on, it comes in as well with the playing under finesse and using finesse a lot as opposed to the power and strength that he does have and he should have is that while his leverage is good, his pad level is naturally good because he's shorter and squattier to begin with, uh, his body control is not. A guy that at times I think struggles to play under control because he has such an abandon and a relentlessness to try and get into the backfield, he can take himself out of plays and he can really find himself out of balance. A guy this strong and 315 pounds should not be put on his side, his back, his ass, his stomach as much as he is. But he is because he's kind of like a fireball and his frenetic energy but it's not always effective, efficient energy. And as a result, my fear is, is that this is the type of guy that can be taken out of plays at the NFL level because you can just let him go where he's going and then you could just work around him and guide him to the direction that you need him to go into. You know, also, I think something he needs to work on are his pass rush moves. You know, like I said, a great motor for pass rushing, a lot of fight, but a guy that strong should be a better bull rusher than he is, even though at times he demonstrated, but wasn't consistent enough for my liking. A guy that needs to work on other moves to be able to better set up that effectiveness of that bull rush. You know, you look at a guy that's this strong, and you would argue that his quickness and his athleticism are a bigger strength in terms of how he utilizes them as opposed to his sheer strength. And that's concerning because you're like, is he really that athletic enough to be a consistent penetrator with athleticism at the NFL level? I don't know. You take some of that athleticism and you better utilize and incorporate your strength. Oh my goodness. But you got to get better in terms of your technique and your pass rush moves and how to utilize your body and what you have. I also wonder about his football awareness and football IQ because there are a lot of times, especially in the read option, spread option, that he seemed to get fooled. Like he was completely lost. Like, the handoff would happen a yard and a half in front of him, and the running back would go right by him, and Billings never even noticed because he's still following the quarterback. You know, in other times, he would be sitting there and going up the field this way and trying to go after the quarterback who's rolling out after he's already handed off the ball to the guy running in the other direction. You know, he's just a complete non-factor in the play. I'd like to see him maybe improve his film study and become more aware of his surroundings and the situation on the football field. In terms of an NFL comparison to me, the closest I could come up with, and I think it's a good comparison, even though he's not as tall as this guy was, I think there are some similarities there, some major similarities there, and that's Kwan Short of the Carolina Panthers. Two guys with tremendous anticipation and burst coming out of college. Quan Short had it at Purdue in great abundance, and Andrew Billings has it in great abundance as well coming out of Baylor. Uh, guys that are very, very strong. Billings obviously being stronger than Short. But two guys 
that especially when they play with that strength combined with that initial quickness can be forces. And they have that knack, that ability to be able to get penetration into the backfield. Sometimes you'd like to see them finish plays on a more consistent basis. Other times you would like them to not be just completely eliminated from the play. But they show a nose, a knack for getting into the backfield. They've got stuff to work with. Uh, questionable awareness in football IQ, and that's something that is a concern. And guys that have trouble... Um, if they don't win with their finesse early, heavily reliant on finesse for guys that are that big and that strong, and that can be a big concern. And I think it's something that was a question and a concern about Quan Short coming out of Purdue. I think it's a similar, legitimate, valid, very real concern about Billings coming out of Baylor. And I think it's in part, even in that weak draft class that was in 2013, it's part of what led to Quan Short being a second-round pick because teams thought, you know, he's a decent athlete, but is he really a great athlete, a great a penetrator in a three technique uh, role is he a guy that's really going to be strong enough to play as a nose what's his positional fit you know what happens if he doesn't win with that finesse early on and that quickness early on is he going to be taken out of the play you know and that ended up in part leading to him being able to be drafted by Carolina in the middle of round two and I wonder sometimes if that's going to be Billings' stock is that he's going to end up dropping into round two and then ultimately outplaying his draft position in a couple of years Overall, though, I, I, I'm intrigued more and more by Billings' prospects as, at an NFL level. I think in terms of his overall draft stock, his NFL projection position or position projection is going to be pivotal uh, to where he's potentially drafted. And I, here are some of the concerns that I have, talking about his height and length earlier. Uh, I think he lacks the ability to anchor consistently enough to play the nose in a 3-4 defense. And with that lack of length, you know, is that really the type of guy that you want playing the nose in a 3-4? At the same token, again, talking about that lack of length and height, is he really a guy that you want maybe playing a five-technique defensive end in a 3-4? I don't know. Usually you like those guys to at least be 6'4", 6'5". And you're talking about Billings is just barely a shade over 6 foot. You know, I don't know. He's athletic enough, I think, to play 3-4 defensive end, most certainly quick enough, and he's definitely strong enough, especially if he learns how to better utilize that natural strength on a more consistent basis in his game. But again, that lack of height and length could scare some teams off that run the 3-4. So a lot of 3-4 teams might not have him highly on their board. They might pass on him in round one, which limits the amount of options for him going in round number one. I also wonder if he really truly has the super explosiveness you would prefer out of a three technique penetrating defensive tackle in a 4-3. He's got some penetration ability, obviously, and he's got some really good initial quickness, but is he super explosive? I don't know if he is. Now, if you take some of that explosiveness that he does have naturally and combine it with his strength and teach him how to better utilize his strength and set up his strength to better set up his quickness, He's a guy like Kawan Short that could be a penetrator in a slightly different way as a three-technique type of role and be a Pro Bowl caliber player. I ultimately think his best fit as, is as a 4-3 defensive tackle. Maybe if you're playing him alongside another penetrator, maybe he could play the nose in a 4-3, but he could be a more athletic nose in a 4-3. That would be fine. I think he could stick as a three-technique in a 4-3, but he's going to need some work in terms of how to better utilize his strength in his pass rush technique, that's for sure. Um... I think he could play defensive end in the 3-4. I do, even with that lack of length, because he is that naturally strong and he is athletic enough and he's got a great motor and great burst and initial quickness. He showed a knack at times to be able to beat double and even triple team blocking while he was at Baylor. You know, those are the type of things a 3-4 defensive end is going to have to put up with a lot. And I think he could stick there. I think his best and most natural fit, though, is playing inside in a 4-3. With coaching and improvement on his technique, and getting into the right situation, the right system, the right fit, give it time, this guy could be a star. I really believe that. I really think that. And I think similar to Kwan Short, he's a guy that in two, three years will make some teams look foolish for passing up on him and could potentially outplay his draft position. I've seen some teams, some people project him in the top 12 to top 15. I don't know if he goes there. To me, he's a top 20 talent in this draft based off the way I see it and envision things playing out right now. Uh, but I think there's a chance he goes in the early to mid portions of round two in part because of the depth of that defensive line class, the fact that many 3-4 teams might not view him as a great fit, so that's going to limit the number of uh, teams that will be interested in him. But I think, again, if he gets the right four team interested in him, even in the early to mid portion of round two, you know, the sky's the limit for this guy. And at the end of the day, if he's strong enough to beat Mark Henry's powerlifting records, well, that would have been enough for Smokey. 
And based off of, I mean, for you wrestling fans that know, over the years, when Smokey would get behind a guy, that meant something. So I just envisioned he would be a fan of Andrew Billings. As a result, I think Andrew Billings has stud potential. That's all the revisiting I needed to damn do. A first-round talent and a guy that I could envision being a Pro Bowler someday.